Have you ever felt like there's just not enough light to take beautiful photos? You know those gloomy rainy days? Uh, we're actually having a day like this today and although I don't mind gloomy days, I'd much more prefer some sun right now to be honest. Okay, so if you live in a place where it gets really dark in the winter, you have lots of cloudy days, foggy, even rainy days, then you might be facing with some pretty low light situations. I've had many students ask me if it's absolutely necessary to get artificial light if you live in a place like that. And while artificial light would certainly help in terms of being more free to decide when you're gonna do a photo shoot, it's certainly possible to create amazing quality images in those gloomy days also with natural light. So here are a few tips I have for you to overcome the issue of not having a lot of light in your home. First, it's something I always tell my students to do, not just because of the light, but for various other reasons, is to get a tripod. Now, it doesn't have to be the best tripod out there. Uh, I've had like this one from, from since I started my blog or even before. Uh, it's very lightweight, it's very cheap, but it does its job and that's to keep the camera in place. So I don't use it as often these days, but I keep it just in case. Why a tripod is important is because it can uh, help you use longer shutter speeds, which means you get more light onto your camera sensor and that will make your image brighter. Second is what I actually just talked about right now. Don't be afraid of using longer shutter speeds. If you're following advice number one and you get your camera on the tripod, you're already halfway through. So what you also need to consider is that with longer shutter speeds, you can see a significant shake if you press the shutter button on your camera with your hand. And that's why I strongly suggest you to find a way to release the shutter remotely, either with a remote control, a phone app, you can use your computer. And also, if you live in older houses or have wooden floor, that can also cause some shaking of the camera. So if you're walking around while you take the shot, I would strongly advise you to stand still while, you, while the camera is taking the photo with a longer shutter speed. My third advice would be to not be scared of high ISO settings. Yes, some camera will perform better when you use high ISOs, some will perform worse. But actually for taking photos for social media and even for websites where the resolutions are not that large, even the beginner cameras can produce an image that will still look okay, even if it's a bit grainy. Of course, don't forget to remove the noise in post-processing. My next advice would be to move closer to your light source. It's pretty obvious that the closer you stand to the window, the brighter your subject will be. But actually light decreases very, very significantly if you move away from the light source. So the closer you can get, the better in those dark light situations. And this might mean you need to move your table uh, or whatever surface you're working on closer to the window. But trust me, that's gonna make a huge difference in your photo. So my next advice would be to use manual focus. When it comes to dark places, autofocus is actually not very reliable and it might actually not even want to focus whatsoever. So just make the switch on your lens and move the focus button from A to M, which means manual, and set the focus yourself. If you liked the video, I'd love you to subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss any videos in the future. Thank you for following along and I'll see you next time.